The Ice Castle, Stambaugh Stadium, in the home of the Youngstown State Penguins, where they will battle with South Dakota opening up conference play. Hello, Penguin fans. I'm Lincoln Williams alongside with John Chiraldi and Mike Yastowski. Another episode of the Penguin Kickoff. What's going on, gentlemen? Not much. All's good with me. Happy to be back here and uh, you know see your beautiful talk about faces. It. Mike, your hair is looking <laughs> exceptional today. It no, looks, we couldn't go one episode without talking phenomenal. about it. It looks phenomenal. You're always so well groomed. Your hair is so it's perfectly styled. It's like full styled. of moose and your beard's trimmed. I can't tell if these are compliments or you guys are making fun of me. What I it's probably you? a combination yes. of both. Okay, yeah. yeah, that's a fair point. Yeah, but hey, probably was. we're still here. We're I mean, here. Well, they haven't pulled the plug right. on this yet, so yeah, we're in good we're shape. We're doing something good. They must think you're somewhat attractive. Not right? doing large part to you, might I add. <laughs> Appreciate that. Let's get into today's matchup, guys. Today, the number 15 ranked Youngstown State Penguins battled the University of South Dakota Coyotes, where last two weeks ago, the Coyotes suffered a double overtime loss, hard fought battle to North Dakota. Chris Strebler had a four-pass touchdown game, his second consecutive game of this season. They've come off of a bye week and to face the Youngstown State Penguins, also coming off of a bye week, where we also return QB Ricky Davis. To give us a more in-depth look, we're going to start off with Mr. John Chiraldi. What do you got this week, man? Well, Link, uh, once you get into Missouri Valley Conference play, mm -hmm. you have to understand that every team is going to possess a, a high-quality level of talent right. across the board. So oftentimes it comes down to the, the person coordinating that talent. In our case, it's head coach Bo Pelini. Right. For the, the Coyotes, we know it's Bob Nielsen. Last year at Western Illinois, still in the Missouri Valley Conference, so obviously very very familiar with the level of play within this conference. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's important to understand that this team is still going through some growing pains, having a new coach in this year trying to get his system involved and really right. get his culture established within the program uh, but Nielsen's an offensive guru really mm -hmm. a creative guy in terms of getting a lot of people involved a lot of people look at this coyote offense and think it's a one-trick pony in terms of you have uh, uh, Strievler the quarterback right. as you just mentioned who leads in both passing and rushing uh, but really for two straight weeks leading up to this bye, you had three different wide receivers catching touchdowns. They really do a fantastic job of getting a lot of players involved and really spreading that ball around. So, you know, a, a staple of a Bob Nielsen offense, mm -hmm. be ready for that ball to be moving all over the place and really getting a lot of people involved. I definitely agree. Mike, what do you got for well, us? I think first of all, when you talk about the South Dakota team, you talk about their quarterback, Chris Strebler. He's a guy who's a Minnesota transfer, and last season was his first year with the Coyotes, and he played five games as a receiver, and then moved to quarterback, and he's made the, made the full jump this season, and he's done exceptionally well. He's thrown for uh, over 300 yards. He has got four or nine touchdowns on the season. He's also rushed for over 300 yards as well. So he's a multi-dimensional quarterback that South Dakota likes to use. He's big and physical and a mm -hmm. tough runner, and I think that's going to be huge for them this year, and they're a spread attack offense. They like to get it in his hands and like to get him out in space making plays. So I think that's this is the team that, as we said, is coming in the game uh, scoring 39 points per contest. So he's a guy that really makes this team go and use all their weapons that they got. Now, last season we saw that these guys, you know, Youngstown State pounded them. What's the difference? As you said, growing pains. They're still growing to be a better offense, better defense. John, what are you talking about the progression from that team from last year? Well, it's important to understand that while you're going to have some turnover in terms of personnel, mm -hmm. uh, you're going to have some familiar faces. This is a whole new system, a whole new coaching staff, and really a whole new focus for this program in terms of culture and what they emphasize on a day-to-day -day basis. Right. Uh, for me, I look at the defensive side of the ball for the Coyotes, giving up 48 points a game heading into today's matchup. Uh, and really, that's a deceiving number. They've been put in a lot of poor positions from some special teams errors uh, and from uh, some offensive errors as well. They mm -hmm. said two straight weeks of turning the ball over the first three drives yeah. in terms of offense. So you're putting your defense in a bad spot. Uh, so I would really categorize this defense as a bend, not break D. They, you know, losing Andrew Van Ginkle, a, a, mm -hmm. an all uh, freshman standout. Uh, yeah. Really, they're really searching for their identity still, but some ball hawks in that secondary nonetheless who will be making plays. Uh, you can be sure of that. Mike, a quick point from you. Well, I think also when you talk about South Dakota, you have to focus on the running backs. They got two really good ones. They got a physical runner in Trevor Boma, and they got a quick explosive, explosive running back in Michael Frederick, who's only a sophomore. He was only one of five freshmen to play last year, and his first catch of the year last year actually came against YSU and went for 63 yards. So these are two guys that they like to bring in at different times. Whether then it's third and one, they give it to Boma, or if it's first and ten, they like to give it to Frederick out in space and make him make, him make plays. So those are two guys YSU's defense has to key in on as well as their quarterback. I completely agree. When we return here on the Penguin kickoff, we go in-depth with head coach Bo Pelini. Welcome back to Penguin kickoff. We had the honor to sit down with the man himself, head coach Bo Pelini, to give you an in-depth look at today's matchup. 
Coach, for starters, uh, you know, a couple guys out of the lineup versus Robert Morris two weeks ago. What's the health status of this team? I think we've, you know, we expect to be pretty healthy going into this game. You know, we have Ricky Davis back, Jody Webb back, uh, um, Brock Eisenhuth will be available, and you know, he's so he's close to being full speed. So um, it, it's it's been a good week for us. You know, Eric Thompson's back, so uh, pretty healthy going in. Not exactly thrilled with how the team performed versus Robert Morris. What was really the focus for your staff uh, during this bye week and in practice? Well, I thought we played well against Robert Morris. We didn't play real consistent at times. You know, that, that's the whole thing. As you get, as you move through the year, we just want to be more consistent, more. Uh, you know, just keep playing higher. You know, playing with better detail. Uh, um, and if we. You know, you, you prepare that way, you'll play that way. And it's, it's a constant process to keep pushing to get better. And our guys understand that. And, and uh, I think we're making progress in that area. But, you know, as a coach, you know, you can never be that, you know, you, I don't know if you're ever going to reach the point where you want it to be. Sure. Coach, uh, obviously familiar with not only South Dakota, but their head coach last year, head coach Bob Nielsen at Western Illinois. What can you expect? From a Bob Nielsen coached football team. Well, I know they're going to be well coached. They're going to they're going to play hard. They're going to be sound in what they do. Um, a little bit different uh, offense than you know, obviously personnel wise than what they ran a year ago. They, you know, their quarterback this year is more of a runner. Where last year they they, they like to throw it around a lot. And defensively, same thing. They're they, they're new and putting their scheme in. It's you know infant stages of that. So. Um, you got to be prepared for a lot of different things. You know, you know what they used to do and what they maybe like to do, but then you got to take into account who their personnel is and what they're showing this year. So, um, you know, so you expect us to probably see some things a little bit differently than what we've seen on film so far. Sure, uh, an explosive offense. You just touched on it, averaging I think about 38 points heading into this game. What do you guys need to make sure defensively? for your team to be successful? No, we execute what we're trying to do. Actually understand our game plan, execute it, be in the right places, uh, be able to react to the things that, uh, that uh, you know, apply your roles to the things, you know, we might not have seen up to this point and, um, and be able to be, be quick to adjust. And if we, if we understand our game plan, we understand what we need to do, we'll be just fine. Coach, a lot of explosive playmakers for this team, uh, and it's been an emphasis. A coach, he likes to move the ball around. You got Bowman, Jackson, and, and you just touched on the quarterback, Streverland. Uh, do you have to do anything special to really account for those guys defensively? No, I mean, you just got to do what we do, and and you know we'll, you know we have a, a game plan going in, and we're, you know very specific as to uh, what we feel we need to do, and we got to execute it at a high level and play hard, play fast, tackle well. Um, I think they're a physical team. We need to be physical and, and, uh, and obviously, um, you know, play with our, the fundamentals and technique that are going to allow us to have success. Sure. Coach, a, a team in South Dakota that is susceptible to big plays um, all over the board. And I, I know the defense is averaging, uh, giving up 48 points a game to opponents, and we've talked about some of their issues on special teams. What are you guys looking to attack, whether it be offensively or defensively? Well, just execute what we're, we're trying to do. You know, I mean, it's, I don't worry about, you know, we're going to know where they are, and, and it's not about trying to attack specific things. Yeah, we have some, you know, that's during the week. You know, when we call plays, you know, they, um, it's be in the right places, do it, play with great fundamentals, and, and do the best you possibly can in executing what we're trying to get done. And, um, and if we prepare the right way, you know, we feel, and we have the right focus and discipline, we'll be okay. Coach, finally, uh, what's your message not only heading into this weekend with South Dakota, but really as you open up the conference portion of your schedule? Take care of us, and uh, you know, we need to be a better football team when we walk off the field Saturday than we were uh, two weeks ago when we played Robert Morris. I, I believe you know we're we're heading in that direction. This gives us the next opportunity to. To, to push and, and become a better football team in all three phases of the game. That's that's what we that's what we're solely focused on. When we come back, we'll give you our predictions and wrap up today's matchup here on Penguin Kickoff. Welcome back to Penguin Kickoff. We were inching closer to game time here with our final predictions. John, Mike, what are your final predictions here? 
Well, I think we've talked about it a lot on this show. Big plays. Today's yeah. really all about who can, number one, limit the opposing team's big plays and in turn generate for some for themselves. And that really starts with something we've heard Coach Pelini harp on uh, this entire season, and that's locking in for the full 60 minutes and making sure mentally you are as prepared as possible and you're mm -hmm. ready to really have a complete ball game. That's something I think we've seen YSU struggle to do at times, has had great bursts, great quarters, right. but putting together a four-quarter ball game where you eliminate big plays and, and really take care of those fundamentals in terms of block Blocking and those little nuances mm -hmm. that really help you ultimately win ball games, I think, is a key today for YSU. Ultimately, I think they're better at the fundamentals. I think they limit more big plays and have some more in turn themselves. And ultimately, I think that see that leading to a YSU victory. So one point is full game. Full, full game, game. game. Okay. Uh, and really shoring up uh, those big plays. Mike, one of your keys. Well, I think one specifically, I'm going to look for the YSU offense to have a big day. Talk about quarterback Ricky Davis. He's back in the lineup today. Same with Jody Webb. They also returned their, their starting offensive lineman from last year, Brock Eisenhuth. This is a team that's averaging 34.7 points per game. The YSU offense has 65 first downs on the, se on the season. So look for these. this offense to have a big day. As we talked about in the first segment, uh, South Dakota's defensive end, Andrew Van Ginkle, is out. He's at Iowa Western this season. So Ricky Davis and Martin Wees and uh, – Jody Webb back. They're going to have big days for this YSU offense. And this is a defense in South Dakota that's giving up 48 points per game. So there's going to be opportunities for this YSU offense. I look for Ricky Davis to have a big day, air it out. And we're going to see one of these receivers step up big. I think it's going to be Alvin Bailey. He's going to have a big day mm -hmm. with only one receiver for uh, YSU. Or ex only not, no YSU wide receiver has more than one touchdown on the season. Right. I think you're going to see that change today and see one of these guys emerge because we've heard Coach Pelini say this group just keeps getting better and better week by week. That's awesome. John. Well, you know, Link, I think this really, once again, sticks with a philosophy that we've heard Coach Pelini preach all season, and that's it's all about YSU. It's all right. about worrying, regardless of the opponent. There are things you can do as a team that are going to ensure you victory. Those are being as prepared as possible, working as hard when no one's watching, mm -hmm. uh, and, and really staying true to what's made you successful. If you're YSU, that's playing good defense. That's running the ball effectively, right. controlling the line of scrimmage not turning the ball over, yes. and, and specifically limiting big plays. I go back to my previous point. I really think uh, that has been the Achilles heel for this team at times, mm -hmm. and at times it's been the biggest strength. So for me, I look at uh, Coach Pelini continuing that philosophy of it is all about us, and, and really it's more important uh, in terms of outcome for what YSU does rather than the opponent they're mm -hmm. playing. Right, Mike, your final point. I think my final point kind of goes off what John is talking about. Why issue needs to control what Why issue needs to be able to control. This is a team that's very physical. We know they got great players on the defensive end, where it's Derek Rivers or Avery Moss or Jamil Smith. This is a team that is very physical up front, and that's what YSU has to focus on. We've heard Coach Pelini say countless times that you got to worry about what YSU can control. As we know, they're going in an eight, eight week stretch where they're playing very good teams in the Missouri Valley Football Conference, and it's going to be a tough eight week stretch. But the most prepared team and the most willing team to maybe sacrifice some things mm -hmm. is what's going to get you know your chance, a, a nice record in this conference, and give you a good shot in the playoffs. So I really think YSU is going to just be about themselves, play hard today. I mean, this YSU, I, I was mad, forgot to mention my first point. This offense is doing extremely well this season. They're averaging more than 20 points each quarter right. this season. So this is a team, YSU, that's been able to score. Only I one turnover coming in. Today. Only one yeah. turnover coming in. So I think this is going to be a team, YSU today, that's going to focus on what YSU needs to get done. And I think it's awesome that the first conference game is at home in the Ice Castle because I know we've talked about the, with the players before, they mm -hmm. love the atmosphere and the crowd that the, the U fans bring to the Ice Castle and Stanball Stadium. So I think that's huge, and it's going to give them a big boost to that. So, finally, you're saying YSU? I'm going to go with the YSU getting their first win in the conference play. They beat the Coyotes today and moved to 1-0 and in the conference and 3-1 and overall. Uh -oh. I look for that offensive line of YSU to really dominate the line of scrimmage. I look for that defensive line for YSU to set the tone okay. against this Coyote offense. And I expect to hear that steel mill uh, whistle going a lot today. I got YSU winning big and opening up Missouri Valley Football Conference play strong. What do you think about that whistle? I love it. It's love it? Thing out. I love it. I'll tell you what. I, I need like one it. I need to get but one on my Impala. Goes off every time they score, and it kind of scares me. <laughs> you think so. that you think that could fit on a Chevy Impala? We can figure it out. At, talk to yeah. Parks. See if yeah. I could we'll get, get one it. for my car. There's we'll one get man that could do it. It's either Trevor Parks or Kevin Davis. So. <laughs> Penguin fans, thank you for checking us out this week on the Penguin Kickoff. Enjoy the game. Uh, have a great atmosphere. Hope you got on all your red. And as always, go Gwens. Go, go Gwens. Penguins.